Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Iris Modridge, mayor of the wonderful city of Rancho Mirage, and this is our regular meeting of the city council and the library board, housing authority board, community services district, and the city council representing the redevelopment successor agency. And this is Thursday, December 18th at 1 p.m. And we'll start off with our flag salute, and it's going to be led by our uh, finance guru, Isaiah Hagerman. Thank you so much, Isaiah. Next, we'll have roll call by Cindy Scott. Mayor Pro Tem Hobart. Here. Council Member Kite. Here. Council Member Townsend. Here. Council Member Wild. Here. And Mayor Smotrich. Here. So today we have a couple of presentations, and we will start off with the introduction of the City of Rancho Mirage Employees of the Year. And both Randy, our city manager, and I will come down front and uh, We'll ask um, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron and Isaiah to come down in front also and meet us. Aaron Espinosa, hang on to that, and Isaiah Hagerman, hang on to this plaque, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce to you today two terrific employees of the fine city of Rancho Mirage. Both of these gentlemen recently received Employee of the Year honors, as you can see from their handsome plaques that they're holding. The Employee of the Year are voted by our peers. It's a real honor to be recognized by fellow city staff members. Awarded employees are those that take pride in providing public service to our fine community. Two winners not here today are Bess McGladry, Deputy City Clerk, and Yvonne Reed, Technology Librarian. Bess recently retired, and unfortunately Yvonne is under the weather today. So let's start with Aaron. Aaron Espinoza is proudly employed at our award-winning Rancho Mirage Public Library. He started his career with the city in November of 2013. He was CVAG's loss and our gain. He is our first library accounting technician, as this position is brand new. He prepares and presents financial reports for the Library Foundation, tracks the Rancho Mirage Vi Writers Festival budget, and oversees overall financial um, um, budgets of the library. Within a few months of starting, we knew that we had a winner with Aaron. Aaron is the rare jack of all trades and the master of all. He assists with logistics for major library programs. He has a keen awareness of matters related to the library building and comfort of our patrons. Aaron is much respected by colleagues as smart, informed, as well as friendly and helpful. Let's all congratulate Aaron Espinoza as Library Employee of the Year. <laughs> Mr. Hagerman is our newly minted Finance Director, newly minted for those numismatists in the audience, <laughs> as he works with money. He has only been with the city for two and a half years, but in that time, Isaiah has contributed so much to the city of Ranch Mirage. Isaiah is a consensus builder and true up and coming leader. This man is my go-to guy for all things public finance. The city of Ranch Mirage is a shining example of a well-run community. Solid finances are at the apex of the public service priority list. He has steered the city through the closing of the redevelopment agency. He has piloted the budget process in complex financial times. He saved the city hundreds of thousands of dollars through various cost saving measures. He has also built from the ground up a mighty fine finance division at City Hall. I think, and all employees at the city would agree, as would our city council, I believe, that Isaiah has a rewarding public service career ahead of him at the city of Rancho Mirage. Please join me in congratulating Finance Director Isaiah W. Hagerman as 2014 City Hall Employee of the Year. 
So what you see before you are simply two employees that we have, a small sample of the next generation of the public and ser service employees at Rancher Mirage. I personally am a strong proponent of succession planning, and I believe that the city of Rancher Mirage will be in good hands for years to come. Thank you, gentlemen. Randy, where'd they get their haircuts, so? <laughs> <laughs> is they don't. Thank you all so very much. And we'll let Aaron go back to work and um, continue on with a little bit of a sadness that has uh, unfortunately befallen our community and uh, one of our former council members has unfortunately passed away and I think that uh, a lot of people out there know him very well or have known of him and uh, I think there may be a couple of uh, council members that would like to f say a few words so we'll start with Richard. Thank you, Iris. Uh, it is a sad day for the city of Rancho Mirage, and I'm really sad to announce that Harvey Gerber, former council member, passed away yesterday, December 17th. Harvey was actually elected when I was elected back in 2000, and he served on the council from 2000 to 2005, and he served on, as mayor in 2003 and was the 15th mayor to serve in that position. Harvey was very much involved with the community and some of the organizations that he served on were the Palm Springs Art Museum, the Stroke Recovery Center, and the McCollum Theater. Services for Harvey will take place Saturday, December 20th at Sacred Heart Church in Palm Desert at 11 o'clock in the morning. Harvey was uh, dedicated to the city, worked hard, former attorney, and uh, he was on the council for five years. So um, and I, I think uh, we all knew Harvey, and uh, he spent a, a good five years here in the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Dana, would you like to say <clears throat> a few words? I, too, will miss Harvey. He, um, he and I became friends in Los Angeles uh, 25, 30, maybe 35 years ago. He was a practicing lawyer there, an accomplished lawyer, and I knew him from uh, various legal uh, uh, organizations that we belong to. Uh, down here, uh, he was one of the first to urge me to seek uh, election to the council. Uh, I don't hold that against him, but it's uh, where his sense of humor lay. Uh, Harvey, by the way, is the author of the ordinance we have in Rancho Mirage, probably the only ordinance of its type in the valley, and that has to do with the regulation of the consignment stores. Uh, he had heard of a situation where somebody had uh, consigned something with one of the stores in the town and hadn't heard anything for a year or two, went in to check on it, and uh, the object wasn't there any longer. And uh, so uh, Harvey eventually got that owner to compensate uh, the owner of the object uh, that um, obviously had been sold, but the commission not paid. Harvey was definitely a man of the people. He uh, was a good guy. And he left here because of his business interests it uh, kind of became all-consuming. Uh, he had pancreatic cancer. He fought it for three years. That tells you what a fighter Harvey was, because uh, pan pancreatic cancer is a pretty fast-acting uh, way to meet your maker. At any rate, we will miss Harvey. We send uh, our love and best wishes to his wife, Angie, and uh, we um, wish him well. 
wherever he is. Thank you, Dana. Yes, it is a sad time for us. Um, we can now move on to some of our other introductions and our presentations. And for this, I will call upon Sean Smith, who is our staff liaison to the Housing Commission. And he's going to come down in front and introduce some of his commissioners. And while they're coming down in front, and we can meet them in person, uh, I just wanted to make a few comments as to what this commission does. Uh, it was formed by ordinance in 1994, with, and it is a commission which is, was created to preserve affordable housing in the city of Rancho Mirage and promote and provide low and moderate income housing for residents of the city. The commission's primary responsibility is to advise the Housing Authority Board of Directors on housing issues. The commission also makes recommendations on the purchase and or disposition of real property, which is owned by the Housing Authority. Additionally, the commission reviews and makes recommendations on the housing element and other compliance reports as necessary. So this is Sean Smith, and he is our staff liaison to this commission. Thank you, Mayor Smarvich, and good afternoon. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Rancho Mirage Housing Commission. Um, but in, we have seven total commissioners, and unfortunately three of them are not able to be with us today. The commission is chaired by Mr. Al Fink to my left. Mr. Fink moved to the area 20 years ago from Orange County after retiring as a transportation manager with Northrop Corporation, having been a frequent visitor to the area for many years prior to retirement. He has been very active as a member at Mission Hills Country Club. And shortly after settling in Rancho Mirage, he was appointed to the Housing Commission and eventually elected as chairman, where he's sat ever since. During that time, he has seen several residential projects developed and looks forward to the continuation thereof. A new commissioner to the Housing Commissioner is to Mr. Fink's left, Mrs. Mary Bundy. She's originally from Indiana, spent 33 years, uh, excuse me, 33 years ago, came to the desert on a two-week trip, loved it so much, decided to stay here at that point in time. She's lived in Rancho Mirage for 30 years and for 13 and a half years at Whispering Waters. She was a secretary on the University of the Seven Seas ship that went around the world for five and a half months. She retired after 17 years with the Palm Springs Unified School District and now volunteers at the Rancho Mirage Public Library in the Book Nook on Thursdays, which is today, which is where she's going to run to as soon as we're wrapped up here, right? And she's happy to be serving on the Housing Commission. And to her left, Mr. Mike Bingston's been serving on the Housing Commission for, how long have you been on the commission now? Four years, ever since I've been here, he's been on the commission. He's been a Ranch Mirage homeowner for 12 years and a full-time resident for six. He manages Senior Move Specialists, a company that helps people downsize, organize, and relocate, and their ex expertise is very helpful to many Valley residents. Another one of our new commissioners is to his left, Mr. Peter Samuels. Welcome to the commission. Mr. Samuels is a fourth generation San Franciscan and served that community for many years in a variety of capacities. Since moving full time to Rancho Mirage, the married father of two and grandfather of four has assisted teaching grammar school students English, served on a Jewish day school board of trustees, and is currently on the board of the Tamaris Country Club. He eagerly looks forward to helping our community. Um, the three that couldn't make it today, unfortunately, Mr. Tom Wheel, Ms. Velma Coombs, and Paul Seibel. If you wouldn't mind giving a round of applause to our Housing Commission, thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Sean. And it's always a pleasure to meet some of our commissioners who work so well with our city and uh, serve as their own liaisons to uh, make things work better in our city. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Robert Barrett. And he is our Marketing and Communications Director, and he will say a few words. Welcome. As Madam usual. Mayor, thank you. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, thank you. Council Members. I'm, uh, as you know, you are very aware that 30% of our annual operating budget, sometimes a little more, comes from the Transient Occupancy Tax, or the TOT, generated by guests at our resorts. So I'm very delighted today to introduce to you and present the credentials of a brand new general manager at one of our most important resorts. 
Earlier this fall, Brian Hughes was appointed general manager of the Omni Rancho Las Palmas Resort and Spa. Brian has been a member of the Omni team for the last six years. However, he has been a rising star in the hospitality industry for over 20 years. In 2008, he was hired by Omni to be the general manager for the Omni San Diego Hotel. Under his leadership, the 511 room property received an associate satisfaction score of above 90% for seven years in a row, the longest streak in the entire company, as well as the highest internal rate of promotion in the company since 2013. He's a former chair of the San Diego Tourism Authority Board of Directors and was recognized as the general manager of the year in San Diego by his peers in the hospitality industry. During his tenure in San Diego, his property was honored by the readers of Condé Nast Traveler as top hotel in America. Prior to joining Omni, Brian spent six years with Destination Hotels and Resorts serving as general manager of the Sun River Resort in Sun River, Oregon, as well as the Argent Hotel in San Francisco. He's also spent time at the Westin St. Francis in San Francisco, the Four Seasons Hotel in Toronto, and the Four Seasons Olympic Hotel in Seattle. Brian was born and raised in Canada. He received his degree from the renowned hospitality school at Cornell University. Brian is married and has two children in high school. I'm delighted to introduce to you the new general manager of the Omni Rancho Las Palmas Resort and Spa, Brian Hughes. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, most of that's true. Madam Mayor, uh, Council, it's a privilege to uh, start this relationship with you today. Thank you for the opportunity to say hello and uh, um, share a little bit about uh, Rancho Las Palmas. You, uh, most of you probably, I know Mr. Hobart, you do know much more about it than I do, but I'm learning and I, uh, that, that really excites me. Um, <clears throat> One of the things, and, and forgive me if you know this, uh, about Omni Hotels and Resorts, and as we've been here for um, a year and a half, as uh, we talk about the vision for Rancho Las Palmas, it ties in very closely to um, the vision that our company has, and it's a long-term vision. Uh, we are privately owned. Uh, our owner, uh, based in Dallas, uh, buys hotels, but very, very rarely sells them. And um, I thought that would be relevant to uh, you if you weren't aware of that, um, because we look forward to being uh, a long-term uh, member of this uh, community and a contributing member of the community. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I was attracted to the company. It's why, one of the many reasons that I, um, I enjoy uh, what I hope will be a long-term relationship with this resort um, and, and the company. So um, I happen to believe that long-term relationships are much more fruitful than short-term relationships. And uh, uh, so I, I wanted to just be on the record to say that uh, that, that is something that uh, we, I hope we can look forward to uh, moving together uh, for a long time into the future. Uh, Robert also asked me to say a few words about uh, the state of the nation, if you will, or state of business affairs with the resort. Uh, we all know that we're fortunate to be in the up part of a business or an economic cycle right now. Um, this year, we were fortunate to see uh, our business grow by about 6%, and we actually anticipate about the same for next year. Mr. Hagerman's probably already worked the numbers and knows exactly what that means to the city in, in, uh, in, in 2015, but uh, we certainly appreciate, as I'm sure you do, uh, the, the current environment that we, that we operate in right now. Um, capital improvements to the resort, um, uh, you know, going hand in hand with the long-term uh, view of the business. Uh, typically at the resort, we'll spend in the, in the range, and it depends on the year, of course, but around a million and a half dollars of capital improvement dollars per year. Uh, 2015 will be no different. Um, there aren't, uh, the, the capital plan has not been approved yet, so there aren't specifics that I can speak to, but 
Um, most of the money being spent and most of the work being done um, doesn't relate to large um, uh, landmark projects, I guess, if you will. There's always a lot of infrastructure work that needs to be done, uh, as well as probably a couple of things that you would notice uh, f physically at the resort, but nothing uh, of great significance in, in 2015. Um, I did want to add before, if I may, uh, I'd be delighted to answer questions that you might have. Just share on a personal note that uh, my mother was on the uh, city council in Victoria, BC for 16 years, and so I have a, a very strong appreciation for the work that you do and uh, how difficult it can be and how thankless it can be at times. And so I, I wanted to thank all of you for your service, and I, I look forward to uh, meeting all of you on a more personal basis in the near future. Thank you so much, and we Pleasure. appreciate all your good service and look forward to seeing you on many occasions. Thank you. Any Thank questions you very much. from council? Okay. Okay, must mean I'm new in town. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you pull permits before you do any work. You got it, absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks good. for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. Okay. Well, next on the agenda, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Jennifer Kuzak. And she has been the region manager at local public affairs for the Southern California Edison Company. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor Smotrich and Honorable Council. Um, I have been the public affairs region manager for Southern California Edison since July 2012. And it's with sadness that I am actually losing um, Rancho Mirage as one of my cities. I've been proud to serve as your region manager. I've loved working with your staff. I mean, Randy, Bruce, Bill, Randy, Isaiah, they are all just wonderful. And the city is well run, and you all do a very good job in um, providing that guidance. So, but with me is my colleague, Nina McCullough. She has been with the company for 16 years, and we work very closely together. She will be taking over Rancho Mirage as one of the, her cities. She covers Desert Hot Springs, Palm Springs, Cathedral City, and Rancho Mirage. I will um, continue to work in Palm Desert, Indian Wells, Blythe, Yucca Valley, and 29 Palms. So we're more fairly distributing the workload and um, giving better coverage to the cities in the Coachella Valley. So I think you're going to be very well served, and I'd like to introduce Nina McCullough and let her say a few things. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council, and thank you for this opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, many of you I have met at previous uh, events or organizations at CVAG, so I appreciate the opportunity of being able to represent Rancho Mirage. As Jennifer said, I've been with Edison actually 18 years and serving in uh, local public affairs for the past three years. So. I currently handle the cities of Cathedral City, Desert Hot Springs, and Palm Springs, and I look forward to working with everyone here and getting to know staff and meeting with you individually. So feel free to contact me if you have questions or concerns, and Randy and his staff will make sure they have my contact information. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Jennifer, for all the work that you've yes. always done. You, you've been wonderful, and at least we're not, lo the Coachella Valley's not losing you. We're just kind of being feel a little lost when you move on. To I'll still see you around at events and everything. You're not so I look forward completely. to the continued, and I'm here always to back up Nina. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And it was nice meeting Nina. We look forward to working with her also. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, we want to welcome a gentleman, uh, Ken Stevens, and he is from Burtick. And he's going to be giving us the second quarter status report regarding waste and recycling. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I know the, uh, the agenda says second quarter, but this is actually the third quarter report. Um, the second quarter was the one we did, uh, I believe it was in July. Um, just to refresh everybody, my duties, I, um, by the way, I'm the uh, uh, Vertex Recycling coordinator for the city of Rancho Mirage exclusively. Um, and my duties include working with businesses, country clubs, HOAs on multifamily recycling, uh, working with businesses um, on commercial recycling, um, tracking uh, recyclable volumes from construction projects, 
um, offering recycle, recycling presentations to HOAs and um, similar organizations, um, working with the restaurant food waste program, and uh, that's not just restaurants, that also includes um, country clubs, institutions, and so on, um, preparing monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annual and biennial reports, and uh, troubleshooting customer issues. Um, also, I'll go over a, a few of the accomplishments from the third quarter. Um, as you guys will remember, um, AB 341 requires commercial customers um, generating four cubic yards of uh, trash per week to add recycling or implement some kind of internal recycling process. Um, prior to the last report, 89% um, of the customers were compliant with this. Um, today, the compliance stands at 93%. And that was as of the last check just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Multi-family recycling, um, if a complex has five or more units, they're required to have recycling in place. Um, compliance prior to the last quarter was 85% and it now stands at 87%. Um, the only thing that really holds us up with some of the uh, apartment complexes is either lack of space for a recycling bin or um, situations where, um, where they may have a residential type can, um, but they have nowhere to set them out. So there, there, there are some unusual situations that kind of hold us back from doing a little better on that end. Um, Trojan Plaza, a commercial development, um, had some confusion as to what goes into the recycling containers and what doesn't. So I met with all of the tenants there and kind of clarified what could go in the container. And uh, we happened to have some old bins out there that said cardboard only and when it was really for mixed recycling. So we, re we relabeled those and got everybody educated. Um, I worked with the golf courses on their overseeding process to ensure that as much material as possible was being diverted from the landfill, um, either through composting or through some other kind of internal program. Um, set up new food waste accounts at Johnny Rockets, the Hilton Garden Inn, and uh, reinstituted it at the Palms Cafe. Um, I worked with the food waste customers in an effort, in an effort to ensure that as much is getting diverted as possible. Um, so far, year to date, Rancho Mirage has recycled more than 2.1 million pounds of food waste, um, or a th about a thousand tons. Um, I worked with property managers to curtail overflow problems at the Pavilion Shopping Center, and this wasn't really due to the, a problem with the tenants. This was uh, probably illegal dumping based on the type of material we saw in the containers. Um, but I worked with them, kind of reset their containers, uh, figured out how to keep. The um, one area, area in particular lock that we had trouble with. Um, I added a recycle bin at Horizon Property Management, which is a commercial building on Highway 111, and visited all the tenants um, and gave them information on the do's and don'ts of recycling. Um, Ago Caliente called me back in July. Um, we wound up auditing their compactor at their request, their trash compactor, because they suspected that a lot of recyclable material was going in there that could otherwise be diverted. Um, so we took a look at it and they were absolutely right. We had a lot of bottles and cans and uh, paper and things in there that could be diverted. Um, so once I took pictures and explained to them what was going in there that shouldn't be. Um, they had asked me to audit it about three weeks later and we did an, took another look at it and it was much cleaner. They had pulled out a lot of recyclables. So um, they were able to look at the material, identify it, figure out where it was coming from and make the correction. Um, Pacific Sales up at uh, Monterey and Dinah Shore for years didn't have a recycling container and part of, part of their complaint was that they had so much illegal dumping they were afraid of contamination. But we set a container out there last quarter and, um, and it so far has been pretty uncontaminated. So the material's been clean and given that most of what they have is cardboard it made sense to put one there. Um, and uh, during the third quarter, we prepared for the autumn waste characterizations, um, which is something we have to do a couple of times a year per our contract, um, where we take sample, waste samples and we kind of dig through it and um, we determine, you know, how much contamination we're looking at. Um, and then I prepared the uh, first quarterly route audit as prescribed by the contract. Um, and this is something that we are doing every quarter from now on just to, so we can double check ourselves and make sure that those Rancho Mirage loads aren't being contaminated with loads from another area. In other words, if a driver gets pulled off a route 
to help with another area that we're accurately accounting for what percentage of that route came from Rancho Mirage. Um, and then really lastly, um, I was working with Randy Viegas and others here at the city on the uh, recycling wheel. And um, you might remember this. This is something the city and Vertec put together several years ago. And it needs some updating. So we went ahead and, uh, and updated it. And it's available now um, for all residents. And I've got some out on the counter in the lobby if anybody wants to pick them up on the way out. Um, and that's really all I had for this quarter. Any questions? Question. Yeah. Um, are we on the way to meeting the state's mandate as far as recycling, or how do we stand on that? Oh, you're already there as it stands right now, um, because at this point we should be at around 60 percent. And as I mentioned, with the with the uh, residential and the um, and the commercial, you know, one year at 93 percent, the other year at 87 okay. percent. And um, and then we have the food waste recycling that as of uh, April. 2016 is going to require most medium to large restaurants to um, to compost the food way or you know arrange for so, some way of diversion and um, that's what I'm we're working on right now so Thank you. anything else and from what I understand uh, our city is one of the best in the state yes yep. we, we're certainly proud of that yeah I know we're all working hard every day to uh, make it even better and you mentioned composting do you find that many people are, are uh, trying to get into the composting of goods? Not so much residents. Um, we see it a little more with the restaurants. In fact, um, I was talking to, um, to William O'Toole, who's the city's consultant, um, and he was mentioning to me the Cheesecake Factory is going real big on the food waste end, so I'll be working with them very soon to get them on the program. Um, but in general, I, I don't find that the commercial entities are aggressively coming to me about it. It's more me going to them and explaining why we need to do it. Okay. So now we know that if they're interested, that all they have to do is give you a call, give uh, Vertic a call, and you'll be at their door. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, and thank you for your report. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, as most of us know, the city of Rancho Mirage contracts with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department for Public Safety and Rancho Mirage. And today we're going to be having a special appearance by a very special lady. And we'd like to invite uh, our new captain, Susan Trevino, up to address, to discuss law, enforcement, and activities in the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank Good you. Good afternoon, Welcome. Honorable Mayor, members of council. Uh, it's, it's come to my attention that uh, we've had a, a spike in crime, at least that's what's been told to me. And uh, I, I put together a, a little uh, slideshow uh, presentation to give you a snapshot of what's going on in the city of Rancho Mirage. So uh, up, up here above is, um, we've, had, we've had a few things go on up in the cove, and, and I'll go through that and explain what's going on in the city. Uh, the first uh, slide that you're looking at is uh, the percentages of the cove in comparison to the entire city of Rancho Mirage. So um, as you can see, it's, uh, there's been an increase over the last uh, couple of years with crime. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we've had a couple of homes up in the Cove area, uh, two specifically, that we've had some problems with. Um, and uh, those folks that live in those homes are, are no longer in those homes. And uh, they've, they've had undesirables living in those homes that we've uh, we've uh, had to deal with over the last uh, year. And, and I, do think, I do believe that uh, after this month, you'll start seeing a, decre a, a major decrease in that area. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think we'll be having those problems up in that area. As you know, last Thursday, uh, there was a robbery up, in, uh, up on Biskra. Uh, a uh, woman uh, came home and uh, was uh, what we believe followed home from another area in the Coachella Valley and uh, got out of her car and was uh, confronted at gunpoint. Uh, we, uh, we've had a few instances go on in the Coachella Valley as a whole, uh, one in Rancho Mirage, a, a couple in uh, Palm Springs, and one in Cathedral City. And uh, we're actively, all of our departments are actively working on this. Uh, right now we have uh, very minimal suspect information, but uh, that doesn't mean that we're not working on it. 
uh, uh, my suggestion on this, or actually the Sheriff's Department's uh, uh, advice on this is uh, folks should uh, uh, check their surroundings when you're driving uh, home to see if uh, folks follow you, follow your pattern that you're driving before you get out of your vehicle, uh, especially around your home. Check if there's any suspicious vehicles or, or persons on foot and call the Sheriff's Department, call 911. Uh, that's what we're encouraging folks to do. We put out a uh, public safety, uh, uh, as you say, a um, statement uh, advising folks what they should do to alert folks. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, crime should be going down in the Cove area uh, as, of, as I speak right now. Uh, so the next slide, Sarah, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the Cove crimes, now I just gave you the percentages, but over the, the three years from 2012 to 2014, you'll see the, uh, the actual crimes. These are all your part one crimes, your burglaries, robberies, thefts, motor vehicle thefts, and aggravated assaults. Now your aggravated assaults include domestic violence. So um, of course, uh, we, we have those everywhere, unfortunately. Um, now, this obviously goes hand in hand with what I just spoke about with the, uh, these two particular homes in the Cove area. And uh, it is uh, what it is up here. Now, I'm gonna go into your, your, motorcle, your motor vehicle theft. You see that that's actually down 100% in 2014. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll, just in the Cove area, but we had an, uh, an incident, actually we had a couple things go on last Thursday and uh, one of those was we, we uh, s solved a uh, motor vehicle theft string that was actually uh, in the city of, they were uh, convening, we'll say, in the city of Rancho Mirage, actually at the Motel 6. And uh, this was going on, we were watching these folks over a period of four days. And uh, we, we cut a string of them, they, they committed uh, about four vehicle thefts in two days, and all from the Motel 6. And, uh, but uh, my, my uh, undercover folks were all over it and um, actually uh, got that uh, with the vehicle thefts and they were also responsible for several burglaries all over the Coachella Valley to include a few in Rancho Mirage. And uh, part of this string was the, the main suspect was uh, responsible for the homicide in, in the city of Palm Desert that happened uh, a few weeks ago at the Shell gas station. So uh, we feel that that uh, turned into a, I'm sure it was, uh, everyone is aware that that turned into a major pursuit uh, from uh, the Motel 6 and uh, traversed through uh, several cities in which uh, there were uh, five traffic collisions as a result of this uh, pursuit. Thank, thank goodness that no one was seriously hurt on this. Um, and then also that, that uh, last Thursday, the same day, we uh, solved a, uh, we're, we're having problems all over the place with uh, metal thefts. And uh, last uh, Thursday, we also took uh, two folks into custody f who had been committing um, backflow thefts um, for quite some time. So we got them in custody last week as well. So uh, that, should, that should take care of a couple of thefts all, all over the area. Um, let me go to the next slide, city, citywide crimes. As you'll see overall in the city, the, the crime for the overall city of Palm, I'm sorry, Rancho Mirage is actually down. So um, I, I think that uh, to say overall crime is down and uh, yeah, I'm very well aware of, uh, I've seen comments from concerned citizens in the community about the Cove area specifically. Uh, I, I am aware that that particular area doesn't have neighborhood watch. Uh, that's something that uh, I, I'm expecting my folks to go out and hold uh, special meetings uh, with uh, the citizens to educate folks on uh, neighborhood watch. We, we, I have one uh, community service officer that that's all she does for the city of Rancho Mirage. But the folks have to uh, do their part as well. Help us, help them. Um, I have a complement of minimum of eight staff members, uh, uh, deputies, undercover folks, uh, community service officers, sergeants, uh, burglary suppression unit folks that are in the city at all times. And if, if 
I can have more if needed, if, uh, uh, depending on the incident. So I, I am uh, proud to say that we're out there solving crime. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't solved the one with the gal with the, with the robbery last week, um, but I'm optimistic. And, uh, but overall, crime is actually down in the city. And the most specific ones is the vehicle thefts and things like that. We just took a, a major ring into custody last Thursday. So I think that that's gonna play a big part in, in the crime. So uh, any questions? Any questions from council? No. Any questions from our audience? Okay. Thank you so much. You're Captain Trevino, um, I think you're bringing a lot to our attention in regard to just mainly being aware. And I know that uh, John Benoit, our supervisor, uh, put out a notice saying that uh, just look around at what's going on around you when you're walking your dog, whatever it happens to be. And if you see anything suspicious, don't hesitate to call 911. And uh, we all need to look out for each other and ourselves. And for all those that are unaware, we are going to be having in February and then again in April uh, a two-hour seminar. We already had one a few weeks ago. And that is being put on by our Emergency Preparedness Commission. And it's addressing all these subjects and crime prevention, uh, becoming more aware, uh, is being put on by our Sheriff's Department, the Red Cross. And we're also addressing uh, how to take care of your pets during these emergencies. So as, as a plug for our Emergency Preparedness Commission, uh, please be aware that we're going to be having these seminars and uh, just look on the website and we'll put out e-blasts about them and everyone is invited in the entire Coachella Valley. So we thank you so much and uh, it's always good to hear that things are getting better and you're on the lookout and all these crimes are, are, are solvable with all your help. So yeah. we're optimistic too. Yes, and I, and, I, and I can't emphasize enough that uh, it's important for folks to uh, contact law enforcement, 911, and, and, and I, for one, want to know if things aren't going right because I'm big on communication, and uh, we're a team, and, and everyone needs to work together because it's uh, very important. Um, so, and, and don't uh, get out of your car unless you've checked your surroundings, and go to a safe place and call 911. You know, the police department's uh, right around the corner here, practically. Uh, but otherwise, um, I, I want to, on behalf of the sheriff's department, uh, pass on condolences for Council Member Gerber. Thank you. So, and thank we'll you. We'll pass it on to his family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, in regard to uh, the discussion about the crime level up in the Cove area, uh, we've been meeting with the uh, members of the board of the Magnesia Falls uh, homeowners group along with the sheriffs and on January 14th there will be a town hall meeting up in the Cove area. Uh, we'll have the sheriffs participating in that, we'll have our code enforcement people there and hopefully we'll have a good turnout from all of the residents in the Cove area so that they can feel better about what's going on as far as police uh, surveillance and, and enforcement up there. So we will be sending out an e-blast to all of the uh, homeowners up there, but uh, we'll spend as long as we have to answering questions for, uh, and the sheriffs will be there in force to uh, help everybody understand what's going on. That again is uh, January 14th. Thank you so much. Okay, no further comments? All right, then we will. Thank you again for coming and, and bringing us up to date. And have a good holiday and stay safe. Okay, moving on to non-agenda public comments. And this is an opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. And I don't know if we have no yellow cards. So if someone has not had an opportunity to fill out a yellow card or, or, and wants to speak anyway, now is the time to come down and uh, join us at the podium. And seeing none, okay, we will be closing public comments. And we will move on to uh, city council board member comments. Anyone on the council? Just a happy holidays to everybody and a happy new year. Thank you. And the same to you. Thank you. No one on this side. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. 
Oops, the <laughs> microphone was on, sorry. <laughs> uh, I also would like to extend uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everybody concerned. Uh, it's been a great year for the city. We hope it's been a good year for your family and you, and we look forward to an exciting uh, new year. A lot of good things happening in the city that you'll hear a lot about. Thank you, Dana. Richard? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, over the last few weeks, you may have seen a series of articles in the Desert Sun concerning the Morongo Valley Fire Department and their effort to raise $500,000 to replace one of their aging fire trucks. Well, sometimes we take for granted the quality of fire service, and fortunately for the city of Rancho Mirage, we have one of the best fire departments in the whole valley. But tonight, we're going to be attending a fundraiser in Palm Desert to present a check for $1,000 from the city of Rancho Mirage to help our high desert neighbor upgrade their fire service. We would hope that some of the other cities and agencies in the area will take note, and if they have the ability, we would hope that they would also support this worthy cause. So they're working very hard in the high desert, and uh, if that's one of the most important things we can have is quality fire service and quality police protection. So invite you all to, the, um, to contribute to this worthy cause. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Richard. Okay, no further comments? Oh, yes, you? I'll say, uh, make a couple of comments. I also want to wish uh, all of our residents a healthy and happy New Year's. This is the last meeting that we will have before the New Year, and uh, we all have an awful lot to be thankful for. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of the troops that are protecting our country, that allow us to enjoy this wonderful way of life, the sacrifices that are being made. The year has been extremely exciting and successful. The city remains financially very, very strong. Uh, we have uh, so far the increase in building permits significantly over the past year which shows, of course, the fact that the economy is recovering nicely. We had the opening of the Ritz Hotel, which was extremely exciting, seven years in the making. Uh, the Rancho Las Palmas Shopping Center is undergoing a transformation, and in January, you will see the first building that will be demolished in the start of the activity. The Rancho Mirage Community Park, previously known as Whitewater, is now closed. That will be, again, an exciting uh, evolution with the construction of the amphitheater. The speaker series is about to start with a very exciting group of speakers, and the Culture Commission has done a wonderful job with the presentation of the Marilyn Monroe and the most recent symphony concert. Uh, we're all very, very fortunate. We live in a wonderful city, and it will continue to do well, and we wish you nothing but the best and a happy new year. Thank you, Ted. And I will echo all of that and more because we also have um, what is going to be the addition to our wonderful library of our planetarium. And thank, many, many thanks to David Bryan, Randy Binder, Dana Hobart for reaching out, doing all the research, seeing all the right people, and helping us to make a decision to make this happen. Uh, your help has just been invaluable, and, and it's going to be another feather in our cap in Rancho Mirage. And we are just so proud of the year that's coming to us. So thank you all again. Also, for those people who have extra gifts or who feel that they want to contribute uh, an unwrapped toy or gift to uh, be given out by the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission, you're always welcome to bring it to City Hall. We have a container, and you can always drop it in our container, and we'll see that it gets to the right place. So keep that in mind when it comes to giving, and uh, as 
As Ted said, this will be our last meeting for this year, and we look forward to a fabulous year to come. Thank you so much. And now closing uh, council comments, we will move on to the minutes. And if there are no additions or corrections to the December 4th regular meeting and the December 8th special meeting, uh, may I have a motion to approve of those minutes? I'll make it, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Okay, motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And now we will move on to our consent calendar and that is going to be handled by Randy, our wonderful city manager. And uh, if there are no members of the public or city council that wish to pull an item, uh, Randy will continue with going through the consent calendar. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the city council. It's a fairly short consent calendar today. The first one is to waive full reading of all ordinances that are introduced uh, on the consent calendar. Item number two on consent is second reading of the Section 30 specific plan amendment. The council will remember at your last meeting, I believe, that John Gamlin uh, received approval of an 82 lot subdivision on 34 acres, and this is a specific plan amendment that accommodates that as second reading. Item number three on your consent calendar is a notice of acceptance for cabinetry and flooring replacement at Parkview Villas, which is one of the uh, affordable housing projects that the city owns. This is 16 units are being uh, remodeled at a cost of about $14,000 per unit. We've completed about eight units so far, and the next phase will be 17 more units. And uh, Sean Smith, our housing manager, will be making a presentation in the near future to the city council on all of the improvements that are going on at Parkview Villas for our uh, senior affordable project. Total project cost on that is $226,000. Item number four on your consent calendar is a notice of acceptance for the Median Island Landscape Rehabilitation Project on both Bob Hope Drive and Frank Sinatra Drive. These are city projects 12-276 and 12-278. The Bob Hope project is one mile long in the Median Island Rehab from Country Club to Frank Sinatra. And the Frank Sinatra improvements are also a mile from Morningside Drive to Bob Hope Drive. Uh, we have removed all of the old water intensive shrubs and high maintenance uh, Washingtonia robusta palms and replaced them with drought tolerant shrubs, shrubs and the uh, Washingtonia filifera palms. We've also added new drip irrigation, taken out all the bubblers, and installed new LED lighting system, up lighting for the beautiful accent lighting you see at night as you drive through the city. Also new cobblestones, boulders, and decomposed granite. The contractor on that project was Earth Sculptures Incorporated. That project totaled $897,000 and was funded through the successor agency bond proceeds. Item number five on your calendar is withdrawn. That, this was, had been a request at the Mission Hills Golf Resort for a special fireworks display on January 21st, but the um, program decided not to do outdoor fireworks. So this would be withdrawn from your consent calendar. <coughs> Item number six are contracts. And to highlight one of the main contracts that you see here is a $185,000 contract for fiber optic cable at the new Rancho Mirage Community Park. You heard Councilman Weil talk about the new amphitheater under construction, 500-person uh, 500, um, 500 capacity, and this new five-year contract will provide uh, high-quality AV services to the new amphitheater. And item number seven on your consent calendar are demands. Uh, demands, as a reminder, are checks that are written by the city that go back into the community for services or um, goods that are rendered to the city. I think that we're doing our part to keep the economy humming along. The city spent $400,000 in the last couple of weeks in city funds, 48,000 in housing authority funds, and 43,000 in library funds. And that concludes the consent calendar, Madam Mayor. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, any questions from council? Randy, could you go into a little bit more detail on item six on page 6-3 regarding the Time Warner installation? What exactly are we getting for 185,000? No, I can't, but Kim Malcolm Menlente probably can. 
Yes, the Time Warner um, contract is for a period of 60 months. Uh, we are doing this somewhat in advance so that they can schedule their construction and their construction costs and labor will not be passed on to the city. They've already sat in on one pre-construction meeting so they're aware of the city's schedule. The key to this is the service payment that will be applied to the city will not, be, will not start until the date of activation. So when Bruce and Bill have the park ready to go and the switch is turned, that's when the actual billing will start with the city. So what kind of service are we going to receive? It's enhanced ethernet, um, internet. At this time, we have no way to communicate between the two locations. We anticipate with the increased activity at the park, uh, along with the amphitheater, there will be on numerous occasions the need for staff to communicate with each other between the library, between City Hall, and the park. So this will allow us to lay the foundation so that we can communicate other than two-way radios. We're just bringing it up to the fiber, fiber standards was for this, five years. Was this an expense that was planned from the yes. very beginning? Yes. Bruce um, Harry, I double-checked with him, and as the um, summary sheet indicates, that he has budgeted in the park fund. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much, Kim, for your update and your information. Um, I mean, it just shows us that, and everyone that uh, not only do we provide the best, but we're doing the uh, most state-of-the-art equipment that is, is possible out there, and uh, we try to get the best cost possible. So, finished with all that, can we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I so motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Okay, motion carries 5-0. All right, and then moving on to the action item, item number eight. And this will be handled by our city manager, Randy Binder. And uh, take it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will turn this over to our capable finance director, Isaiah Hagerman. Thank you, Mr. Binder. Madam Mayor, members of the city council, uh, the item before you today is a request to authorize the city manager to execute a lump sum payment of the city's remaining CalPERS pension liability and the approval of the related fiscal year 14-15 budget adjustment. Uh, this staff report is really probably the culmination of about a year and a half worth of work for our budget subcommittee, which consists of Mayor Pro Tem Hobart and Councilman Kite. And after uh, numerous meetings over the last year and a half, we are finally at the point to where the city has the ability to address this portion of our unfunded liability. So some of the background on our unfunded liability is it was really comprised of two components. We had the pool's unfunded liability and we had the side fund liability. Those two items together made up our unfunded pension liability. As you recall, in May 2014, the City Council approved the payment of the side fund. And at that time, changes were required by CalPERS before the city could apply extra payments towards the pool's component of the unfunded liability. The Calper CalPERS board has since took the necessary action to allow risk pool employers to determine the best course of dealing with our unfunded liability. Uh, prior to this change, the city was forced into the repayment plan provided by CalPERS. We had no option to address it any other way. Now with this change, we can address it in a manner which uh, our governing body sees fit. Based on our uh, most recent actuarial report, and an actuarial report is uh, basically just a review by CalPERS that looks at uh, data, historical data, and projects into the future. And uh, in that report, which is attachment C to the staff report, uh, the city's remaining unfunded pension liability uh, would be $10,062,207 on June 30th, 2015. Built into our employer contribution rate 
is this CalPERS method of repayment. So built within our current costs, we are paying towards this unfunded liability just at a very slow rate. And when you take a look at the report, if the city elected not to do anything extra, not to apply any extra payments, but to follow the minimum payment per, uh, required by CalPERS, the amortization or the payoff of this liability would take approximately 30 years. And over that 30 years, the city would pay a total of $24,647,299. That is approximately $14.6 million in interest over the 30-year period, plus the principal balance of the liability of $10 million. So where does this interest component come from? Since the, pool, the plan, the pension plan, is unfunded, CalPERS assumes a rate of return for these plans of 7.5%. Since that money is not in the plan earning that 7.5%, CalPERS looks back to the agency to fund that lost return on investment of 7.5%. So the city is, in fact, paying down the principal plus paying the lost 7.5% interest earnings on that money since that money is not with CalPERS in their plan earning interest. By utilizing the city's reserves to uh, completely pay down the remaining unfunded pension liability, the city's employer contribution rate for 1516 would decrease from just over 18% down to about 10.3%. This represents a decrease of 7.727% of our rate. So that was the amount that we were paying towards this unfunded liability. If we make the payment to pay off the unfunded liability, they no longer need to build that component into our rates. That decrease of about 7.7% from our contribution rate equates to about a $469,000 a year savings uh, to the city's uh, operating costs. Uh, also, by making this payment, right now the city's pension plan is approximately 70.6% funded. This would bring our plan up to 100% funded right now. Go ahead and bring that up. Now, uh, due to the timing of the staff report, uh, we w did not have the invoice from CalPERS. And so the slide that you see up on the screen right now, uh, and the invoice was provided under separate cover uh, to the city council, you can see the amount of the pension liability that I'm quoting in the staff report is a, a future number that would have been as of June 30th, 2015. So that's that $10 million number, the top number you see there. If we were to make this lump sum payment to CalPERS uh, by the end of this calendar year, you can see that our actual payment is only going to be $9 million, and I say only, it's uh, going to be <laughs> slightly reduced. It's going to be $9 million $704,854. This represents a difference of $357,353. And that is uh, because our money will be in the pension system as of December 31st. Uh, the city won't get charged for the lost interest for the six month period of July 1st, 2015. I'm sorry, January 1st, 2015 through July 1st, 2015. So we saved that 7.5%. Uh, for that six month period, which represents that $357,000. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this next slide is uh, kind of a replacement for the schedule that is on page 8-3 in your staff report. Um, if, we, if the city council chooses to make this payment, we are going to be allocating it out based on a percentage of payroll. Uh, so this is just uh, internal funding of this payment, and you can see the updated numbers here provided in the slide of where we would uh, potentially fund this payment from. So um, to summarize, you know, the, the really key issues were um, if we pay down this liability now, uh, we will essentially be saving a 7.5% a interest rate. Uh, when, you, when the budget subcommittee looked at the factors of our city, uh, they felt that um, 
we had the means to be able to do this, and the financial benefit was there to be able to do it. Right now, our investment por portfolio is earning about 1.15%, yet we're paying 7.5% on this obligation. And in the future, what you will see is reduced operating cost, which eventually we will re rebuild back our reserves, this one-time investment, through reduced future operating costs. And with that, that concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you so much, Isaiah. Any questions from council? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'd like to make a comment that this really is a remarkable achievement. There are very few cities, not only just in California, but in the country that has zero unfunded pension liability. It's quite remarkable. And it shows the judicious nature of our city and how conservative we are as far as managing our money is concerned. To be able to make this kind of a payment and still have a very substantial amount of money in our general fund is, again, quite a remarkable achievement. And I want to give a lot of credit um, to my humble colleague, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Dana Hobart, who conceived this, and he is humble on occasion. But he did come up with this idea, which is quite amazing, quite progressive, and saves the city a significant amount of money over a period of years. And so we're blessed, and it just makes us look all the more solid for the future. So congratulations to the city and to everybody that's endorsed this plan. Thank you, Ted. I, think I would make one comment, if I would. Um, seeing Sandra Johnson over there uh, reminds me that about uh, three or four years ago, the city council uh, during the year that I was mayor uh, embarked upon a uh, modernization, be one way of calling it, uh, of the uh, salary, pension, and benefits schedule for employees in the city. We tried to approach it from a business-like perspective, and um, uh, we never saw eye to eye with each other, that is the council and the, uh, the employees association. <clears throat> but the council went forward and uh, enacted the changes that resulted in considerable savings, including in the pension accounts. Thinking about that for several years, it got me to th realizing that there was no reason for the city to have an unfunded pension liability. Uh, why were we paying interest of change from year to year, but at the present time, 7.5%, why were we paying interest on the amount of money we owed to CalPERS when we had a surplus that would allow us to pay off that indebtedness and thus cut from our ledgers the payments, the annual payments, to CalPERS in the form of what's referred to as interest, costing us millions of dollars. The money that we have in our reserve fund is earning about 1.2 percent, and the money that we uh, owe to CalPERS on the unfunded part of our pension <coughs> liability, we were paying out six, seven percent per year. Made no sense for us to be earning 1.2 percent and paying 7 percent uh, interest. So by reducing the amount of our surplus, we no longer have to pay the interest, which saves us about a half million dollars a year, uh, which increases our, our general fund uh, by that amount every year. And we have provided for our employees who we respect and care for deeply because our city, as others have said, our city is not what it is because of disinterested employees. These are employees who, A, 
have the responsibility of taking care of their families, and that's paramount in everybody's uh, perspective. But a close second to that, our employees do care about the, uh, what the city looks like, what the reputation of the city is, and it seemed like it would be a nice, not a quid pro quo, but it would be a nice way to approach uh, the employees to let them know that we do appreciate them and do care for them, notwithstanding what we did four years ago. And by paying this unfunded liability, by paying it down to zero, we are assuring our employees that they will have pensions when the time comes. As everybody knows, uh, throughout the country and including in California, there have been judicial decisions saying that, as generally speaking, as sacrosanct as pension liability is, there are exceptions when cities run into trouble. Our city knows now that we will never run into trouble with respect to an unfunded debt that was growing larger by the year. So we did that both for the economy, because it made good business sense, and we did it because we wanted our employees to feel comfortable uh, knowing that we do care and that we want to make sure that your pensions are what they were promised to be. We didn't change the promise, but we did a little bit uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, we modified things a little bit, not a lot, but we wanted them to know that our commitment to a, uh, a pension long into the future when our younger employees retire and live another 10, 20, 30, 40 years, that they will be confident that the money will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative for what Isaiah did. He uh, made me understand in detail the, uh, the issue, made me realize that this was the right track. He took hold of it, uh, made uh, uh, a lot of inroads with CalPERS. CalPERS, if you can imagine, this, the situation was this. If we owe CalPERS $14 million, CalPERS treats it as though they had loaned us $14 million and charged us 7.5% per annum interest. They didn't loan it to us. It's our debt. We owe it to them but it's treated by them as a debt on which we paid, we paid interest. And uh, it was not the easiest thing to get CalPERS to accept, to modify, they had to modify their rules, and Isaiah played a large role in getting the um, CalPERS people to change the rules to allow us to pay off our debt. If you can believe it, we did not have that generalized authority. If you owe money to a bank, you can come in and say, here's the money I owe you. I don't want the next 20 years uh, of payments. Here's the cash. Couldn't do that with CalPERS. And Isaiah uh, presented the case that it would be eminently unfair. I hope that uh, he, uh, he and I talked about this. I don't know if he told him this, but I had made the point that this is something I thought we would win in court if they gave you trouble. Uh, we'll talk further about other approaches to it, but apparently uh, CalPERS saw the light, uh, and uh, uh, we are where we are. And it is pretty, um, pretty appealing feeling to know that we are one of the very, very few cities in America, much less California, uh, who no longer will have an unfunded liability in their pension accounts. That's pretty unique, and it should give our residents a solid feeling that uh, the conservative economic management of this city has covered as many bases as we can possibly think of and will continue to, to do so in the future. Thank you so much, David, Dana, for those comments. Uh, we uh, obviously applaud <laughs> both you and Isaiah for all the work you have been doing and all the ideas you have come up with through the years to make our city better and more financially sound.
um, I think that it's good for our citizens to know what's really going on behind the scenes, that we don't just show up to these meetings and, and uh, you know, take things lightly. We take them very seriously. And for all these people that are so gifted in their fields and so knowledgeable and so professional, uh, these are all the things that make Rancho Mirage what it is and, and the, the city that we're all so proud of and, and the lifestyle that we've come to enjoy and everyone wants to emulate. So I thank you again so much. Okay. Okay, well, I think we are, I mean, I, I think that with that, we will have a motion. And first, if there are any members of the audience that would like to make a comment or come up and ask questions, now would be the time. Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comments. And I will ask for a motion. Madam Mayor, I think it's only appropriate that uh, Dana make the motion on this uh, particular uh, item. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I would move that the City Council authorize the City Manager to execute the payment of the City's remaining CalPERS pension liability in approval of the related fiscal year 2014-2015 budget adjustment. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. And motion carries 5-0. And again, congratulations to you all. Okay, I think that kind of sums up our day's activities and agenda. So uh, I'll give it to Steve Quintanilla and he will tell us about our closed session. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. City Council and Housing Authority Board will now recess into closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9 regarding the pending case known as Veronica Juarez versus the City of Rancho Mirage. Thank you so much. So our next meeting will be January 15th, 2015. We wish you all the very best for a wonderful continued holiday season and a healthy and happy and fun year to come. This meeting is now adjourned.